Welcome to day two of the 12 days of comp book love. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. I have this beautiful password keeper that I've had for a number of years. I just love it. However, I'm pretty messy sometimes, and I'll just give you a quick glimpse into what one of my most used pages looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hold it still because their passwords, actually most of them don't exist anymore, and I've changed them all, so I'm not terribly worried. This password keeper is beautiful, but tiny, and it needs updating, and I, I can't find this, but bigger, and I love this. So what I did was take a picture of the cover and print it full size. So I'm taking this 50 cent composition book. my digital download that I made, and I'm going to turn this comp book into a much more user-friendly and cleaner version of my current password keeper. You could also, of course, use this as an address book. And for those of you who like matchy-matchy like I do, you could print it twice, take two comp books, have one be your password keeper, and one be your address book. Easy peasy. And just these pages are just luscious. You can just print these pages and use them in various composition books. Use them in your junk journals. Use them behind. I, I, I see me printing this out over and over and over again because I absolutely love it. And I made the tabs color coordinated, don't you know? So, every time I do a composition book, it seems, when I do cover them, I'm doing it a little bit different for a different reason. Normally, when I cover a composition book, I do the front first, and I fold everything inside here, and then put a cover sheet over that. But, because I'm doing this one a little bit differently, I made my own with this rubber band, because this has a rubber band closure and I, I think that's cute. So I took a picture of it with that. And so I need this on the front. And if you see how it's, it's just perfect. It's already got the rounded corners and the nice clean edge and the rounded corners. So I want this front piece to wrap. Actually, it's not going to wrap. Excuse me. That's why I'm doing it a little bit differently. I'm going to put the inside pages on first, wrap those around, and then cut this off and place it exactly where I want it. So it, it's a little bit different process than I've done in the past because instead of having the front wrap and then cover on the inside, I'm going to have the front inside cover wrap to the outside. Hopefully it will make more sense as we go along. I have also taken a picture of the back. Now I'm not sure this is going to be, this might get cut off a little bit because this is a little bit bigger than my page. The back's not really much of a concern, but I did want that. What I've done so far is I've taken the two sheets that I want to use in the front and back cover. I open my book. Now you can see this is printed borderless. If you can't print borderless, print it as big as you can and you'll have to trim off the obnoxious white little bit of a border that it leaves. I'm putting this just a little bit further away, not right up to that. I originally wanted it right up to that marker, right up to that pink line, but it does, doesn't leave me enough to fold over on the edge over here. So I move that down just, oh, a good quarter inch away from that pink line with my copy size eight and a half by 11 letter size paper. And then I just run my fingers along. I have a little bit on top and a little bit extra on bottom. And I just run my fingers along, giving that a crease where I want it. Fold it in there, fold that cover over and tuck that in. And then I took these outer edges and just folded those along. What I'm trying to do is train that paper where I want it to go so that when I have all the sticky stuff on it, it knows exactly where I want it to go. Now these corners, bring those in first and then train it again. And that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to train those corners in. And so 
when I cut this down, I can butt that right up to the edge. And now there might be just a tiny bit of overhang, and that's all right. I just want this around that edge, so this is a lot more sturdy. And I did the same to the back. I brought it not quite to that red mark. My fingers in there and gave it a nice crease. Folded it and did the same thing back here that I did on the front. The whole idea of that, of course, is to make putting it on a little bit easier, like I said, when you have the glue all over it. I'm going to be using my tape runner gun uh, because it's a lot faster and sturdier, uh, but I'm also going to be using this Avery glue stick as well because using the glue stick with the tape runner gun gives you a little bit of wiggle room time. I'm going to do the back first just because I have it where I want it. And because it's a pretty bold print, I don't have to paint this. If this was really light paper, for example, if you're going to use a different paper on the inside and it's lighter, make sure to put white paint over this. Otherwise, you'll see this through your light paper. But if you're using a darker or heavier, maybe a scrapbook paper on the inside, if you don't want to use this, then you should be good to go. Uh, what I always try to remember to do is lay it on top and if I can see the stuff through and it bothers me, I paint it. I can sort of see it through here, but it doesn't bother me at all. I can barely see it, so I'm not going to go through that extra step. So I'm going to put my... This is so much faster than that ridiculous double-sided tape that you have to Pick, 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 cut, snip. I have, I just have no patience for that whatsoever. And I can't stand watching it. So there, there's a lot of sticky stuff on there. But I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to go over that glue. Where I just put the tape, I'm going to put glue. And in between, just all over. Because having that tape be wet with this glue, I can maneuver this a little bit, where if I have just the tape down, once you put it down, is down, and there's absolutely no wiggle room whatsoever, and that's no good. I'm going to fold it over that edge and then bring it in because this is the edge that's important. I need this to wrap perfectly. Smooth it all out. Take the glue. that's a beautiful thing. I just love it. I love it already. It's so cool. It's going to be so much easier to work with and so much cleaner because I've had this one other one for a number of years and so a lot of the stuff in there I don't even need or use anymore. So why have it around? I mean really. Okay I'm going to do the front cover and then we'll fold the sides over. Tuck this fold that I already have up to that. I'm gonna kind of line it up to my where I had it. There with some glue. Nothing like a fresh glue stick. Yum yum yum. I 
getting a little carried away with the glue there so i'm gonna put this down while we're messing around so that that glue doesn't ruin anything oh no i got my corner stuck in there Whew, that was a close one so here i'm going to use my glue stick and i'm going to glue that corner in first the other corner down pinch those edges nice and crisp now up here at the spine it gets a little a little wiggly so I need to go in there I just stick my scissors right down and snip to the top of the spine just to separate those two things I'm going to do that on all four of them That gave those corners a few seconds to adhere. And because we cut that, it worked out pretty well. I'm going to put another piece over top of this so this piece doesn't have to be 100% perfect. You know, you want it good and secure, but because we're going to put another layer over it, it is by default going to be nice and secure. Spin it around, we're going to do the same thing to the bottom. Because I cut that, it'll fold over real nice for me. And we've already trained it. So we're going to fold it over real nice. Now there's a tiny little bit of oddness on that corner so I'm just going to take and snip off just the tiniest angle of both of them and we'll fix it later if we need to we may not have to do anything to it and I'm pulling towards me as I do this so that it's nice and taut. You know, you want it to have a nice shape at the end. All right, do the same thing on the front. Pulling it right up to the edge of that corner, pressing those that seam down so it folds nicely. I want to make sure that that seam stays folded. You don't want any bumps in your corners because that'll give you bumps in your cover and who needs that? Okay, we're going to put that aside for just a few minutes and I'm going to bring out my little trimmer here. I want to take off right at the at the edge of it. The one I use in the kitchen has a wire down here. It's a Fiskar brand. And man, am I getting spoiled with that. It is so much easier to see where you're cutting because it has a line. It tells you exactly where it's going to cut. Where this one is mm, eh, kind of close. I'd use that one here. However, it's it's smaller it won't take an 11 and a half inch piece of paper uh, and i got i got a little carried away but i have plenty on the other side so i don't think it'll matter do the same on the other side Oh, not even close with that one. <laughs> I don't think my picture is straight. I don't think that helps either. 
Yeah, my picture wasn't straight when I printed it. That explains a lot. Oh, that one was good. That one was real good. Okay, I'm going to use that again here in a second. I want to cut off these corners so that they're accurate. And I'm going to give that little bumpy thing a little bit of texture. Cut that corner off. Well, hang on. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is the back. And these go there and these go up the points go up so I've got this I've got this where I want it to be now I need to cut off that white and I want to have some down some of that purple down at the bottom so what I'm gonna do is just with my finger if you sew you kind of finger press that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press that line in where I need to cut it on top and bottom Bring my handy dandy trimmer back. And I'm just going to follow that line. Even if it's not perfectly straight, I know that's where I want it to be. Easier to see. Sometimes it's easier to see if you turn the paper over. So I'm making sure that the fold is in the cut line and the fold is in the cut line, which means I have to slant my paper ever so slightly in order to get that right. Same here. I want that fold line in the cut line and the fold line in the cut line. Now if all went well, it's going to fit. And because I've wrapped this, let's see, going to leave it. I was going to say, because I wrapped it, I can take it down a little bit. I can make this a little bit shorter because I have stuff at the top and the bottom here. But of course, it won't line up perfectly, and I want it to line up as perfectly as possible. So again, I'm going to line it up on the edge of my cover where I want it. And finger press the corners so that I know just how much to take off. I'm just going to round that a tiny bit and this one a tiny bit. And then do the same for the front. I've got plenty here on the front. Want that right up to that edge. I'm just gonna press it with my fingers. Trim those up. It's a good thing I like composition books because sadly there's a lot of trimming involved. I could try to print it the right size, but I'm better at cutting and making it work than I am at measuring and math. So this seems easier for me. Whatever works for you. Now, I have a conundrum. It's going to have a black spine. I don't think I want a black spine because my original does not have a black spine. So I just so happen to have printed an extra page. Whatever did I do with it? None of these are long enough. There's my extra page. This kind of has the spine. I want that. 
I'm going to have it wrap right around there. So I'm going to take that and then some. So I just put a little dent with my fingernail in where I want it to be. Um, how long does it need to be? Making life hard for myself. I want some off the top and some off the bottom rather than just a whole bunch off one end. You know, why make it simple? I'm getting pretty uh, cocky here in that I didn't re-measure it to make sure I measured it and cut it right. <laughs> I'm just getting ready to stick it down. So cross your fingers for me. Hope that it works. Make sure my little points are going in the right direction. I'm going to put it right there. And wrap it around. Oh, it's beautiful beautiful I still have to go back and cut those little bits off I'll do that in a, well, I suppose we could do that now let's go ahead and cut those off pretty now I can feel that there's some hangover or maybe it's just loose there's some hangover just trim it off because it's if you don't trim it off it's just gonna get beaten and battered and tattered and make everything look like junk so make sure your your book is upright flip it over to the back Make sure you get the back paper and that it's going the right way. Because now I have this beautiful spine covered, I'm going to take a little bit more off of this side of it so that it's not having to deal with that bend. Because if I butt it up where I want it to be here, there's not enough to make that curve and it will just keep curling and get crappy. So I'm going to put it where I want it which is right up against the edges. And again, just with my fingernail, make a, an indentation of where I want to cut. Under my little handy dandy trimmer. Yep, that's enough. -hoo -hoo, she's coming right along. Okay, more my beautiful tape runner gun. I love this stuff. I love this gun. Although once in a while, it does get away on me. The reels get all jacked up and I have to take it apart. I've done that maybe twice since I've since I've had it. And to me, it's oh so worth it not to have to deal with the the uh, nightmare of peel and stick and stick and pick and pick and peel paint. I'm going to borrow this, use it as a glue pad because I did not get all the way to this edge over here because, because this isn't going to overhang a little bit. And so I just want to make sure that that edge is glued down really, really well. Actually, I want to do that to all sides of this because it's going to be sitting on top rather than have the stuff wrap around. So it's important that all those edges are 
gluey. upside right. This is the opening. I want those things there, so I'm gonna butt it right up against that edge, that edge, that edge. And the rest of it doesn't matter. As long as the top and the bottom, or the, as long as this edge is right, the rest of it doesn't matter because it's all gonna blend in beautifully. Look how beautiful, look at, look, it's so cute. It's just so cute. Of course, you don't have to use my digital thing to do this. If you have one of these that you're in love with, take some pictures of it, pull them up to Canva, use the free, the three free part, blow it up so it fills up the space on the paper that you need. Download yourself a PDF. We're almost there, kids, we're almost there. I got glue everywhere, that last little bit. Okay, so this, does this one have to be trimmed down? I think just a whisper. For the same reason, it's right on that spine and I'd hate for it to just keep getting bumped and bumped and bumped. And I didn't round these corners, so I'm just gonna just ever so slightly round those corners. literally taking crumbs off just to round out those corners not taking much off at all so that's the front just pulled out a magazine to use as a glue pad because i got glue all over my deli paper already messy messy crafter Composition book is upside right where I want the front. I've got the rounded corners on the edge that I want them to be on. So I'm going to butt that right up to that edge. Get my top right. Get my top correct and my bottom correct. And just layer down. Oh, she's so cool. It's going to get even better, though because this one has like all do tabbed pages and so we have to have tab pages this has every single page is tabbed we're not doing that i don't have that kind of time or patience what we are doing are these kinds of tabs so i'm going to go cut these out go check on bitsy glue them in i'll save the, the last few for you i'll show you how to deal with them and then we'll be done so I ended up cutting several of them in half, so I reprinted the whole page because I didn't want to have to figure out which ones were right and which ones were wrong. I'm going to save the other ones, the messed up ones that are sort of cut. I'm going to save those for collage and masterboards. They're beautiful colors, so it's not going to go to waste, but in order to save myself time and frustration, I reprinted the whole thing because I kept cutting them in half. I did go back and make sure that this is not so pale that you can't see it. What I've done is cut them along the sides. I still have to cut out their centers, but I'm gonna do that in just a minute with some smaller scissors. What I'm doing right now, I have three at a time because that's about all my old, old, old creative memories. I have a corner chomper, but that prefers 25 or so. <laughs> that prefers a lot. This one prefers one at a time. So we're, we're doing the best we can with what we have. And I'm just rounding off those corners, stacking them neatly in that side, giving them a snip. They're not in any sort of order just yet. We don't need to be until I put them in the book. You know, it's in the details when these things really start to shine. 
it's all in the details. Sometimes it works just dandy. Doesn't quite work, just hit it again. And again. <laughs> Just one left. It likes just the one. Oh, I spoke too soon. Really? That last one, Y and Z, just can be a righteous pain. Okay, so now what I have to do is go in, I don't even know if you can see it, but cut out those little triangles so that they fold a little bit better. Maybe my little stork scissors will do. My good cutting scissors are out in the other room. I think I'll do them one at a time just to make sure they're right. I'm just going to round that corner and round that corner. It doesn't have to be... Perfect. Just gives them a little bit more room to go around the page. These are not the scissors to do it with. They're nice and tiny, but they're not very sharp. These are nice and sharp. Maybe if I round in into that corner. Much better. And they don't always, you know, there's a corner there. You can see that point. Just snip that off. These are going to be on the back of the page, so it shouldn't matter too much. But sometimes that stuff bothers you, you know. Apparently, I cannot cut from that angle, rounded. I always leave a little corner. I'm sure there's a way that I can fold these in half and make this work a little bit better, easier, faster. But I'm almost done. And I don't want to figure it out. So this is going to be it for tonight. But I know that you're going to say, you know, you should have done this and you could have done that. And I, yeah, I know, but I didn't. So here we are. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. <laughs> Done is better than perfect. We're almost there. While we're watching this paint dry, please, 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 if you have watched more than five of my videos, please subscribe to the channel. A full 60% of you are not subscribed people who watch aren't subscribed and i have noticed that is a thing across all channels big small no matter the genre if someone has a thousand subscribers they've got three thousand viewers or so 2500 viewers subscribing is absolutely free and it's one of the very best things that you can do for the channel it tells YouTube that we're worth watching and worth pushing in the algorithm. And it makes such a difference. That subscription number makes a huge difference to channels of all sizes. So please, while we have this time together, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you know when new videos come out on this channel. K-L-I-J-G-H. You try doing your alphabet backwards. You go ahead and try that. Okay, so now I've got them all in order. Give them all a little bit of a fold. It's probably better to do them one by one. Oh, look at me go. It's getting late. I'm going to need pacifier pretty quick. <laughs> I 
It's getting late. Okay, so I did a little bit of calculating on my phone, and there's a hundred hundred pages in here. And a hundred divided by thirteen, which there are thirteen tabs, two letters for each of the twenty-six letters per tab is thirteen tabs. Thirteen into a hundred is about seven maybe 7.69 pages per tab so i'm just going to make my life simple i usually don't use the first page for anything ever so i'm just going to open that up and then i'm going to count one two three four five six seven pages for a and b right a and B. And then one. Three, These are all kitty wampus. Look at me go. They're going to stick out here, and so the C and D has to be at the fold, not at the edge. I knew it didn't look right, but couldn't figure out why. I'm going to go adjust and reprint. So we're going to try it again. I shifted the letters to where they belong on the fold. I knew they didn't look right. And now what I'm doing, reprinted this just this page because I didn't need all the others. I just reprinted this one page and trimmed them all up with my trimmer because it makes a much straighter line than I can with my scissors. So wherever there was a straight line, I cut with my trimmer. Then I took a an orange wood stick Anything pointy will do. It has to be pretty small because these are tiny. But what helped a lot was to take a pointy orangewood stick or a tiny little stylus that you use for embossing. Anything like that will do. And I put it here in the crack. This is where the blade goes in this channel right here. I lined that line just a hair over the colored mark because I don't want any white to show on the fold. It's okay if it shows on the back, I don't care. But I lined that up and I took my little pointy thing and I just made a nice V in that, on that line. And then that made it super easy to fold. Now I've got a nice clean edge. There might be a tiny bit of purple on that side I don't care that's the back I don't care and and they weren't all perfect when I folded them but that doesn't matter either because they're going on either side of the page now this particular one I can see a white line right there now that I'm up close and personal to it and I, that will that will bother me so I'm gonna just shave that off now the offending white line is gone. I do everything in batches because it saves an enormous amount of time. I trim them all with the trimmer first. Then I went in with my fussy cutters and because they were folded, just rounded those. I didn't use these, but these will do. I just rounded those corners on the inside and I used my corner chomper from Creative Memories for the outside. The reason I didn't use them on the inside is because it goes quite a bit into that fold to make it fold easier. So it was kind of tedious, but I'm going to I'm going to like the end result a lot better if I do it that way. Otherwise, it'll be kind of haphazard and sloppy and I hope to keep this password keeper for a really long time. So I don't want things to be irritating from Jump Street because then I'll have to do it again. Now what I'm doing is I'm auditioning where these are gonna go, how I have to space them to make all 13 fit, and where do I want them sticking out 
how much do I want them sticking out? I want them to stick out a little bit. That's the whole point of being able to find the Fs really fast, right? So that's the whole point. But just how much? And I'm going to see what it looks like because it has to be visually appealing as well. I've had to leave this project for a couple of days after because when I went back to reprint these, it was very late at night and I didn't want to record anymore. And then a, a couple days have gone by. And I tell you, I, I've come in here just to check on it, just to see how cool it is. I just love how it's turning out. Even that that little, I didn't think it would work really well, but it it looks kind of cool. It almost looks like a regular, like the spine. I, I'm loving this project. So let's get back to it. So I always skip the first page of every notebook. I don't know why. Just do. I started counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven here, seven for each of them. And this too is a bit tedious, uh, but I think in the long run will be worth it. So here's my page number one. It has to come down a little bit. So this is page one so that has seven whole pages to itself. Another reason why I'm not gluing these in right away because my track record with this project so far has been error after error with these tabs. I'd hate to have them be in the wrong order. <laughs> so I'm going to audition them and I'm going to rehearse the alphabet and make sure, not rehearse, recite the alphabet and make sure I have them in the right order. Now, in this other password keeper, I know that I use G a lot. So, and I also know that I'll have extra pages at the end and Y and Z don't need a whole bunch. So I'm going to put an extra one in my G section. And that is something that you can do too. Uh, you know, go through your password book and see where you have the most. And do you need more A's and B's? So figure out where you have the most and put extra there if you need to. Might as well do two pages for G, just because. There's going to be some finagling one once these are in, I'm sure. And I'm, as I'm placing these, I'm eyeing up these to see where approximately they should go. And you can use the lines to kind of follow through where the bottom of the tab starts, follow that line over and place the next one near that area. Some people could probably measure this and do some quick calculations and figure out just exactly how many centimeters they need to be placed apart. I am not that person. I know I don't have many in Q and R, so I'm not gonna do as many for Q and R. Maybe just four. Q, R, Q, Q, R, R. This isn't Q and R though now, is it, Carrie? You're getting ahead of yourself. This is O and P. Let's just look. I don't think I have any in O and P. I'm only going to do four in Q and R. But those might be very different for you, so you do whatever works for you. Only doing four for U and V. So much for having extra pages left over. That just proves what I always tell you about me and my math skills. Uh, 100 divided by 13 is 7.9 or 8 or something like that. So I rounded down. So I should have extra pages, right? I'm not going to have any extra pages in the back. And that's all right. We're at W, X, Y, and Z, and there isn't much there, but I encourage you to do your own math and figure out how many pages you're going to need for each of your little tabs, because clearly mine is flawed. So what I'm going to do is... I need two pages at the back for different things. And that leaves me one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to put three in the WX and two in the YZ and call her done. I could redo it all. I'm not going to. Although seven pages is a lot for... How many do they give you here? So they give you five per in that little one. So seven's not bad, I guess. 
And then that leaves me two pages in the back for some other things that I need to keep in this particular book. So let's see how it looks here. Mm, I love the colors. They, they match really well. I'm very happy with that. I have a gap here, so this one can come down a little bit, and this one can come up a little bit. Oh, yikes. These two are right on top of each other. So these are all bunched up, and these are all too close or too far away. So I'm just going to shift them down a little bit. That's why I said it's important to audition these and get them where they need to be before you glue anything down. What I'm trying to do here is just have the bottom cover up the top because they're all the same size. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. There. What I ended up doing, these three, these three are good. The two purples overlap. And then there's a whole bunch of teal only because i don't want to keep fiddling with it you can keep fiddling with it as long as you want to <laughs> but i'm not gonna so what i need to do next then is glue it in glue them in and i'm gonna have to take them off apply the glue and then put them back in which is also pretty fiddly i hate to say that but it adds so much well to this project it's a necessity but it adds so much to the visual aspect of it. I just love how it looks. So it's worth it for me. Hopefully for you too. I'll just have to remember that. To get to the M's, I have to go underneath the dark purple. I think I can do that. Because I don't have a laser printer, I have to use a glue stick. If you have a laser printer that your ink won't bleed, just a little line of art glitter glue would do the trick. I should have mentioned this way earlier. I should have printed these tabs on cardstock or heavier duty paper then. because then they really feel like tabs. I've Usually when I do the tabs in my digital kit, I print the, the tabs out on cardstock and I, I totally spaced on it even though I had to print these twice. Do I want them way out so you can see the whole thing? Or do I want it in so you just see the color? Oh, let's be bold. Let's have the, let's have them stick out halfway. Boy, these decisions, I tell you, I guess I'll go half and half. I can't decide if I want them all the way out or all the way in. So half and half. Sure, why not? The beauty of glue stick, you have a few minutes to get your thoughts together. It's really important to me to have them line up along the, along the edge here for a nice clean look. You could mark too, so it's not so hard putting them back together. That would make sense. Make sure you're only getting one paper, one page per tab. You don't want to glue all seven pages in the tab. Of course, I'm moving them slightly, so it won't be exact. I guess I would just, if you want to mark them, just give a little, tiny little mark where you want it to go, and then when you go put it back. But because I'm moving these as I go anyway, so I'm just going to keep doing this and adjusting them and I'll come back and give you the flip. So as I've been going along, I only have two left. I'll show you what it looks like so far. I think I put these too far out and then they slanted down. I think I decided to go half and half and then about here I decided I didn't want to see the letters so I moved them in a little bit. I'll have wished I did it this way all the way down but I didn't and I'm not going to redo it. Each one I've done a little bit differently. This L sticking out is probably going to bother me. I can I still have time. No, she's pretty pretty well adhered, so I, I'm not going to be able to change it. But I'm doing XYZ down at the bottom here. And what I'm doing now is while it's still paper clipped in, I'm finding the exact right spot for it, getting it level and even while it's paper clipped in, closing the book so I can see how it's going to lay, then opening to that page and marking where it's at just by going around it with a pen, real light pencil mark. And I'm gonna take it off, make sure I only have one page, and I'm only gonna glue the colored part right now. Because I did not print it on cardstock, this little extra layer of glue on each side is gonna stiffen it up a little bit, which is good. And I'm gonna bring it back down to where I marked it, line it up as best I can to that line, to that mark. Check it again, because you still have some wiggle room, and that's pretty good. Then go to the other side, 
and glue the back down. Putting glue on the tab, not on the paper. And I always worry that I've moved it, so I check it again before it, before it sets and then come back and give it a good smush with your finger. One more time that way. I'm going to line it all up while it's still paper clipped in. Do only the colored part. Get those edges really good. Line it up. Double check. Good to me. Only one page. Push it down. And there you have it. And I am thrilled with how this came out. I just love it. I will put the bands in the kit if you want that. The original kit just had plain paper, so you don't have the bands. But I just think these bands add so much to it. I'll put those in the kit, and then you'll have the option to do with it as you please. Now, of course, in a password keeper, there are name, what site is it on, what the password is, and any notes that you want to make, which is great. I will, I, but I don't tend to use it that way. Here's typically how I use it. I put whatever the site is just with a trigger name. I don't even usually use the full site. And then I don't use the address. I don't fill in the logger name or username where it belongs. I put it up wherever I feel like it. And then I do put the password in. Rarely do I make notes. Uh, I'm going to put a blank one of these on the print side. these off and glue them in you can but i am just gonna use my i always use only a pencil in my password keeper because i change my passwords regularly and so i'll probably just put the site the password which email or my login username or did i use did i make up a username or did i use my email and a date i always try to remember to date when i changed the password because sometimes it'll be a year before I go back to a site and it'll say, oh, this this password was changed. Did I change it? I don't know. I don't remember. But if I go back and say, oh, yeah, I did change it. As of this date, it's X, Y, and Z. So I, I won't probably be using this. I might maybe write it in as I go. I don't know. We'll see. But mine is pretty messy. That's why I use a pencil. Because it's messy. And because you're supposed to change your passwords. So I can erase stuff out of here. This is a, a fluid thing. This is not a, a concrete, once it's done, it's done thing. It's always changing. You're adding and subtracting. And even sometimes sites will change their name. Oh, we don't call ourselves that anymore. We're this now. And you have to figure out how to find it in your password keeper. So always use a pencil so you can erase. I also wanted to point out, if, if I haven't yet already, that this would make a fantastic address book as well. Some of us do still have address books, old fashioned, write them down, keep them handy, password, uh, excuse me, addresses. So print the kit twice, make two of these, have matching password kits and address books. If you have alphabet stickers, you could put your monogram at the bottom to jazz this up, or you can pick something that's color coordinated or whatever and cut it out and decorate the front. There's a lot that you can do to this now that it's done and it's yours. Do with it what you will. That way you can, I wouldn't put password keeper on here because you don't want to announce to the world that this is access to everything you've ever been online, but maybe your initials on this one and address book on the other so you can tell them apart at a glance. Again, you can embellish this now all you want. You could put sparkles on the, you know, peel and stick jewels on the thing or on the band. Uh, there's so many things you can do with it now that it's done and it's yours. I absolutely love, love, love how this turned out. It's perfect. It's way bigger than this, which I loved this. That's why I bought it. I didn't realize it was so tiny and it worked for a long, long time, but I've made a really big bad mess of it and a lot of these are no longer useful so why keep them so instead of cleaning this up i wanted to start fresh do the same thing with your address book a uh, quick note on my digitals uh i etsy bothers me and the more i have been on it the more it bothers me i'm not going to close my etsy shop but my digital kits are going to now be instead of 
always only for sale on Etsy. Anything from this point forward, I'm going to put on my Patreon shop. When I watch YouTube, I'm on YouTube and I stay on YouTube. I don't want to chase my favorite creators. Oh, I'm on Instagram. Oh, I'm here. Oh, I'm there. Check me out on LinkedIn. I have a podcast. I have a website. Buy on my Etsy store. Find me on Patreon. Oh my God. I'm not going to chase you all over the internet. So I don't expect you to chase me all over the internet. We're here on YouTube. That's where we are. That's why I started the Krabby Crafter Clubhouse here on YouTube for some extras who, who just can't get enough of the saltier side of the Krabby Crafter. There's that right here on YouTube. So you don't have to leave the platform, go someplace else to watch more videos. The other place that I have you go is Patreon because I don't have a personal website. That's the only place I can link my free digitals and my bonus content. Plus, I would love to have a Patreon following. And Patreon just gave us the opportunity this year to start a shop so I can sell digital images on my shop. What bothers me about Etsy is they take, they take and they take and they take. And if you're selling a $2 digital kit, there's about eight cents left over, which is just not worth the time and energy to put up all the photos and make the video and, and list, make the listing. And so they take a listing price for every sale. They take a sale price for every sale. They take, they take and they take and they take basically. And there's nothing left. Plus I just don't like it. I don't like the platform unless you've been with it forever. Nobody can find you except your, your, your viewing base. And right now that's about 3000 people. My goal between now and Christmas, let's say, is to be at 5,000. We're, we're hovering right at 1,500 and I want to grow the channel and you can help me do that by sharing, by commenting, by subscribing. <laughs> All those things are free. You can also help support the, the channel and the content by being a free member at Patreon or a paid member at Patreon. That brings me back to my digital kits, a lot of them are free. My $5 a month Patreon tier usually gets at least one digital kit for free, in addition to some behind the scenes and some extra footage and miscellaneous stuff for the $5 tier. And that would, that would be an amazing help for the channel and for me to continue to do this. I love doing this, but as I've said before, I, due to health reasons, have to make this work and so you can help me make it work by being active on the channel subscribing liking commenting sharing it post the videos to pinterest or your facebook page hey i just watched this cool video check this check out it takes you a third of a second and it costs nothing but a few seconds of your time or a third of a second of your time and it, it will help immensely my goal is 5000 by Christmas, and I know you can help me do that because you are a creative, crafty, supportive, wonderful bunch. And so I, I only want to be on YouTube and Patreon. I'm going to leave the stuff that's on Etsy on Etsy. So like my coffee, coffee dyed digital papers, the coffee collection will stay on Etsy. I'm not going to close the shop. So if there are things there that you have in your favorites list or that you have in your cart, Go get them. Why wait? But they'll still be there. I'm not going to close my shop. And if I do, I'll give you lots and lots of advance notice, but I'm not going to close it. I'm just going to, from here on out, give it away to my $5 Patreon tier or to sell it on my Patreon page so that you either find me on Patreon or YouTube. Once in a great while, maybe Instagram, but rarely, because I don't want to have you chase me all over the internet. And I don't want to be all over the internet. I want to be crafting and doing artsy stuff versus <laughs> posting stuff on every conceivable platform. So find this kit free for my $5 Patreon members or for sale in my Patreon shop. I've already printed out and I'm ready jazzed to do the next edition of hashtag comp book love, the 12 days of comp books series. It's so cool and I've been itching to do this for a really long time and it's almost here. So please stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I'll link the playlist for hashtag comp book love, which is an open collaboration. If you're doing things with composition books, please feel free to use my hashtag. Click me in, let me know, give me a little bit of 
give me a shout out so that I know where to go to find what you're doing because I'd love to see what you're doing with composition books. Uh, this is this is episode number two. There's already been a bonus. There will be probably several bonuses, bonus editions of the series because I have lots of ideas and lots of things I want to get done with my com composition books. So stay tuned, get subscribed, comment below. Are you going to make one? Do you have a password keeper or is it all up in your head? Or are you using the same password every time? <gasps> For shame. Until we meet again, go love up your Beasleys. Because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. Mate at the lake. Out for now.